Okay, so this is kind of part two of the using lists for your CMU project. And in the first video, I just uh, inserted a bunch of numbers into a list and looped through them and manipulated them. And I, I, I'd like to do something very similar, um, uh, except in this case, I'd, I'd like to see if we can manipulate um, some some shapes, some shapes in uh, in CMU. Now this is a little different from groups and we'll talk about groups in another video as well, but I'll just start out by creating, uh, let's see, let's say three circles. So I'll put a circle in the middle of the screen and make it of radius 10 and then beside that I'll place another one just to the right and then another one to the right of that. These three should look like, let's just see, we have three of them. Oh that's radius I forgot so I'll just move them over just a little more. So kind of a snake type centipede thing of some kind. So there's three in a row here. And um, now if we <laughs> we wanted I don't want to give too much away on this but I guess I'll do a few things and just see what, where we end up. What if I thought this 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 thing was snake and I wanted to make it move um, you know, I just wanted to kind of have this one kind of move up here and this one kind of, and then this one move into that position and this one move into that position. That's what Snake does as it moves around. Um, you know, I could do that by adding some values to all of them. So let me do that. So let me loop, loop through all these shapes. So remember, each of these shapes in this list is a circle. So maybe I'll just call it uh, a, a C. So and what I'll do is I will change the center x of each of these and I will add, um, I'll subtract 20 to the, uh, from each one of them. So, you know, what we're doing here is we're modifying, I don't think I have access to the, the list here. No, so what we're doing is we're modifying each of these and they'll, and it will move to the uh, left. And that, we can do that several times. So, whoops, oh my gosh, I think I hit my button there. Okay, so now when I run this, um, it's moved three positions to the left. So I really need to kind of slow this, like do this in a stepwise fashion. So what I'll do is I'll do this with an on step and do it like that and we'll see it moving to the to the left there and if we wanted that to slow down we could go into our documentation and uh, change the app steps per second and just slow that down so it goes only one one step at a per second so let, to, just to be clear what we're doing each time you see that move, what we're doing is we're looping through each of these circle objects and we're shifting them to the right by, uh, by 20. And that makes them all move to, to, the, to the left. And, and now this might apply for all sorts of things. You might, they don't have to be all connected like that. They could be separated out. So maybe they're kind of all the objects in, I don't know, a crossy road type game where they're all moving you know, along in a kind of, in a sequence. And it doesn't have to be quite so choppy either. We could certainly make this move just a little less and maybe speed it up a little more. So it kind of a sm smoother motion. You can play around with this, these kinds of ideas, but while we're, you know, debugging it and working, it's nice to work in a kind of a slower fashion. But you can see that in order to do this otherwise, I, we could, this could be a group and that we could move it around but the, the other thing that might happen is that we might you know want 
um, one of these, let's say one of these kind of in, engages with an, another one, we might want to find out if there's a, a hit that occurs, like use a, a kind of hit, te hit test. So if I were to place a object in between here, okay, so I'll place a, um, another circle, I'll call it uh, player. And I'll uh, put it in at 240, let's say. You know, this shift it down a tiny bit, so it's... I should just make another color or something, but, you know, just leave it down a tiny bit. So it's this one here. I moved it up, sorry. So I want to know if any of these are hitting, you know, hitting something. Now with it a group, I, I need to double check this. I think with a group, we would find out that the whole group were would hit it. Um, but in this case, I want to use this. So I'm going to do my hit shape. So remember, our hit test is under our shapes, under our methods, and it's hits plural shape. And I'm going to use, you know, one of my circle objects. So I'm going to ask if it hits shape and I'll hit, see if it hits my player. So I'll test each one though as it goes through. So player and sorry, so I'm skipped down there. So for C in shapes, for each circle in my list, see if that circle uh, hits, hits a shape. And remember that returns a true if it does. So I could do a test here. Now you could say if that equals two equal signs, testing for equality. Um, you can see if we if that's true. And as you might know, because this is an expression here that already evaluates the true or false, we don't really need that part. I could delete that, but I'll, I'm going to leave it in. So, and if that's the case, hit circle. We don't know which circle it is but we'll just see what happens here. Okay, so we're looking down here in the console, nothing's happening, and there you see the first hit circle occurred. And to build on what we did before, remember we cycled through these things using an index. So I could say for i in range, now currently there's three shapes in there, so I would do that. Okay, and instead of checking uh, the the circle which was stored here, I have to actually retrieve it from the list. So it's shapes at i, but that is a circle, right? It's going to be the first circle the first time we go through this loop, the second circle the second time, and the third circle. So from there, everything else is kind of the same. So we'll see which circle we hit because at this point we know the index of of which circle uh, had a had the collision test so mm -hmm. Hmm, what did I do there if so we're not seeing anything but this is zero one we should see a one there because it's the circle one that hit now as it goes through it'll stop hitting after a point so it stopped and now it's hitting circle two. So you can see that, you know, different different applications might require different approaches and being able to loop through your list and do tests on a variety of pieces within the list might kind of give you an idea of what's going on in your in your game in an easier way than, you know, it, testing if these are all stored in variables having to test these with three it's manageable but if you have more than that it might become kind of difficult let me do another thing let's just imagine that these are all going to just scroll down all of these shapes and then occasionally i'm going to throw in another shape and just have these all kind of scrolling down so i just kind of move them um i could move them around but i I won't bother. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. So I in shapes, but because I know I'm going to add some, I'm going to find out, oops, didn't mean to say that, range. And I want the number of shapes that I'm, I'm currently have in the list. So I'm going to use this function, 
the length function to find out how many there are. Then I'm going to look at the circle at each index. And I'll just modify its uh, y value to move it down a bit. And I'll do that inside of on step so that it happens repeatedly, slowly, with our steps for a second here. So you can see they're all moving down. Okay. And then I'm just going to add a new one every so often. And I can't remember if there's a random function within CMU. I'm kind of thinking of processing. So what I'm going to do is first I'll grab a random. So what I'm trying to do here is from random import rand int. Rand int is just a a uh, a function that gives us a random number. So um, from so if I want a random number, say from 1 to 10, then that will give me uh, a random integer. And it includes the endpoint. So we eventually we'll see a, a 1 or a, or a 10 in there at some point. Some point there. So it includes the 10 as well. So let's just say I insert a new circle. And remember, inserting into a list, you can use append. So append a new circle that we're creating at randint. I don't know. I've made them. This, this thing is 400 wide, so it could fit 40 circles that are uh, 10, 10 wide each. So I'll just ask for a position between uh, you know what I'm just. I'm, Something's going to be off screen here, but it, that's fine. So we'll get a random, uh, a random number between uh, one and forty, and I'll just multiply it by ten. I, I'm not, you know what? I'll just simplify this and just ask for a random number between one and four hundred, and I'll start it up at the top of the screen, and it will be ten pixels wide as well. So this gives me a random number. It's going to be the x value of the new circle. It's going to be somewhere between the, the left edge and the right edge. It's going to have a y value of 0. So it's going to start up here. And then it's going and it's going to have a radius of 10. This is going to get uh, quickly going to get too many circles, but we'll see what happens. So and I've missed a bracket here. Bracket craziness. So that should be it. And you can see there's going to be, you know, a lot of circles very quickly. But they're all moving down, kind of raining down. And again, I, I don't know, I, coming to CMU, I'm still fairly new to CMU. So sometimes, you know, you use the approach that you learned before from other, some other situation. And um, you don't recognize that there might be a better way to do this in CMU. So I'll, I'll think about it and go through the documentation a little more. But this is this, you know, this might help a few students who have some ideas that uh, might need some some kind of techniques like this.